deep, while deep in worship. In a vision of the night, in the spirit I saw an enormous angel, ten times larger than the most physical and muscular man I'd ever seen on this earth. He had golden curly hair with eyes like liquid blue lightning. His face was like that of a shining white hot furnace, and in his mouth were tongues of fire, which came forth beautiful celestial languages of the heavens. Suddenly his right hand extended upward toward the northern sky, while his left hand clasped the end of a brilliant bright glowing ember sword. His clothes were made of a heavenly material, such as not ever found or seen on this earth. Like a very fine bead-like material that seemed as if it were alive. Platinum-like in color, it pulsated with light, a living light, that emanated the very glory of my Creator God. Oh, and sundry, never-changing musical melodies in endless scales and discounts of indescribable beauty were like a spontaneous spring gushing forth from his very garments. This angelic being had just come fresh from the presence of Almighty God. For I began to realize that the glory beads of his garment still sparkled and shimmered with the light of God's own Shekinah presence. I trembled at the reality and the very existence of such glorious beings. Obviously from another dimension far greater than this, his face was imbued with a spirit of nobility and purity and purpose, and yet with an almost pitiful expression. He looked down on my trembling frame and said with a loud clarion voice, Come! He took me by the hand, and in one moment we were moving upward at great speed, where I could see on the horizon to the north a great throne of light. All around the throne was a brilliant fog and mist, surrounded by incalculably tall, towering clouds with a multitude of lightnings and loud thunders encompassing it. And I could see angelic beings singing beautiful songs and some were doing cartwheels in the sky. Again on the horizon one could easily see in the far distance a glorious throne upon which sat the most excellent and glorious God and King, and above his throne was an emerald rainbow, the arc of which is immeasurable in height, too awesome to describe. And to the northeast, I could clearly see seven large jeweled mountains with pillars of holy fire extending up from them. The angel said, This is the future dwelling place prepared for God's own elect. I then pleaded with the angel, Please take me closer to God's throne, because I could feel the life and the love and the light that came from his very being, even though it was in such a far distance. The closer we drew, the more alive I felt, the more joy. I never felt so alive in my entire existence. God is the source of all life and love and holiness and perfection. To be close to Him is an unutterable ecstasy. And as we drew closer, I trembled with fear, for I began to see the four beasts. These cherubim-like creatures, great powerful living creatures who protect the throne of God who incessantly praised the Lord of the universe. And I could see the multitude of their eyes, within and without, who see and discern all things. One is not capable to perceive or calculate their height, 
their width, their fearsome might or power, the amplitude of their energy or strength. And glory and honor has a great throng of angelic symphonies play continuously free flowing music. As I looked upward, I could see streaking across the celestial skies of heaven like shooting stars, multitudes of ember-like chariots of multiple colors, carrying scores of heavenly luminaries. And I could see a sea of angelic beings, seraphim and cherubim and archangels, and angels of all varieties, a multitude too numerous to estimate all raising their hands and playing instruments to the glory of him who sits on the throne between the four beasts. Myriads of angels with such beautiful and glorious singing. And millions of angelic voices blending together in this kind so high and harmonious and complex with amazing ethereal quality as to defy the imagination. Suddenly there appeared to the right side of the throne one who had the appearance as unto the Son of Man. In an instant the angel and I fell prostrate on the crystal floor as if slain, while a great archangel larger than the sun exclaimed with a loud voice, Behold the Son of God, worship Him! The brilliance of the Shekinah Streams forth from his presence for millions and millions of earth miles, and with the voice of many waters, he said, Let him who as he is hear what Jesus Christ has to say to his church. Happy is he who turns aside from the pride of this life, the lust of the flesh and who forsakes the secular, ungodly, worldly paths of this fallen cosmos and Lucifer the fallen one. Then suddenly I heard peals of the loudest thunders and huge lightnings as the heavenly whirlwinds pushed us higher and higher toward the Most Holy One's very own throne. Can me hold the black name with his face Or see his form No evil will dwell in his presence No man will glory in his presence No flesh can glory in his presence Yet the extent of a holy father's face Is incomprehensible and without a measure or analogy To see this part of the vision was for me to melt into nothingness I cried out to the angel, please save my life. For the lips of the Lord are as a furnace of fire. There is no metaphor or words in earth language to describe all this. The face of our God cannot be spoken of. Yet from his glorious face emit sparks and lightnings of life for the entire universe. The light of the face of God is brighter than a trillion sun stars. His holy face is, is man-like, but it's translucent and incandescent and so unutterably beautiful and pleasurable beyond any compare. Supremely awesome and infinitely unique and glorious with powerful and mighty mysterious voices of incomprehensible magnitudes, multiple voices and billions of commands Simultaneous commands emitting forth from his mouth and being. His form is attended to by armies of the millions of angels who obey his every pulse of thought and whim, who do his bidding and worship his holy face with never silent singing. The glory of the omnipotent eternal one is dazzling beyond description. Then this marvelous archangel looked down upon me and said, Yet, even the least of the elect saints are the brothers of Jesus Christ, your Lord. 
Yea, even thou shalt sing a song that we angelic beings can never sing. For by the blood of Jesus you have been adopted and made part of the royal family of God. And you will sing forever the song of the redeemed, and shall rule and reign with our God. Yet I still remember the vision, and can almost recall the glorious sounds of these angels. For with the angel's song, I again can see his throne. Padre Santo, Espíritu Santo, Angelico, el ánima se eleva, verso la eternita.
to fly to the brilliance of His glory and His light. Jesus, you're my heart. Living love. 